Um, hello everyone, welcome to Mystery P. Today I'll be going over the 2024 AP Computer Science Principles FRQs, both set 1 and set 2. I took it this year. I had set 1, I believe. Let me double check. Um, yes, I did. I had set 1. So I'll go over both of them. I didn't look at set 2, so I'll sort of figure it out with you guys. But I'll go over what I think is the correct answer and what I put and what are my predictions. The curve is very small for computer science principles, but this is the first year they changed the FRQ style. Now there is an FRQ section, so the exam is instead of two hours without break, it's now two hours. Uh, it's now three hours, two hours MCQ, break, one hour FRQ. So let's get started here. So the first question usually asks about your program in general, not really code related. So this question here asks, um, programs accept input to achieve their intended functionality. Describe at least one valid input to your program and what your program does with that input. So um, this one, you just talk about like how a user can interact with the program and what the program actually does with the user's input. It's pretty straightforward. It just asks like user does this, what does the program do in turn? Um, it says at least one. If you put one, that should be fine. I put one. I didn't put more than one because I wanted to be cautious of my time. You get a lot of time for the FRQ, but nevertheless, you want to be cautious and see all questions. So just grab at least one valid input and you just say, oh, user inputs an integer or a string, some form of text or whatnot. And what your program does with that input is, um, well, maybe it searches through a list. Maybe it suggests, recommends, so stuff like that. Okay, so two A, B, C, it's kind of divided into sub questions. So yeah, you have to refer to a personalized project reference sheet for this one. Two A says, consider the first iteration statement, including the procedure section of your PPR, we'll abbreviate, describe what is being accomplished by the code in the body of the iteration statement. So when I actually did it on the exam, I forgot what iteration statement is. And what gave it away was the fact that it said in the body, of the iteration statement. So I was like, Oh, shoot, if it has a body, that means it iterates something repeatedly, some segment of code indented. I know that if statements are conditional. So I figured an iteration statement is just a loop. So I included a for loop and I was right. So what you want to talk about in 2a is some sort of loop that appears in your procedure. Um, it says the first iteration statement. So I'd say like the first loop for me, it was a for loop that searched through a list, yours could be a while loop. Um, so yeah, any form of a loop or a while loop. Okay. Yeah. Um, to be consider procedure identified in part one of the procedure section of your pretty PPR, write two calls to a procedure that is each cause a different code segment in the procedure to execute. Describe the expected behavior of each call. It is not possible for two calls to a procedure to cause different segments, code segments to execute. Explain why this is the case. So mine was focused on brawl stars. And the thing is, um, people could input a brawler name of the game and the program would give information about that brawler however if the input did not match one of the existing brawlers the procedure would instead return notifying the user that um, no such brawler exists check for spelling existence whatnot um so yeah i did two calls one of existing brawlers so like it would be characteristics find and then whatever brawler exists with correct spelling and then another uh, call would be um, characteristics find with a different argument, such as I had um, different, like a misspelled brawler that actually exists, but because it's incorrectly spelled, it didn't find it in the list. And I just said how different segments of my procedure would be run and executed. So yeah, if you could talk with respect to your um, code as well, and maybe if you are curious, if you're qualified, you could leave your questions down below and I'll see if I can answer them. To see, this one was kind of tough. This is form O, I believe, because it's the one I got. Form D is the other one. Um, so this one says, support another, suppose another programmer provides you with a procedure code check validity value that returns true if a value passed as an argument is considered valid by the other programmer and returns false otherwise. Using the list identified in the list section of your personalized project reference, explain in detail steps an algorithm that uses check validity to check whether all keyword is all, or at least that's what I got from this, elements in your list are considered valid by the other programmer. Your explanation must be detailed enough for someone else to write the program code for the algorithm they use to check validity. So what I did, again, with respect to my list that has brawler names and the procedure that uh, characteristics find, I didn't really use that one. I just searched um, 
whether the elements in my list, which is the bunch of brawler names, are valid for the other programmer using this procedure check validity value. So what I did, I made a new procedure sort of to keep my uh, to keep my algorithm in question can compact, and I defined a variable. I think I said like k equals zero or something. Um, and then I had a for loop, so for brawler in brawler name. My list was called brawler name. It's a for loop I made. So I said i or k, I don't know, whatever variable, k equals zero for brawler and brawler brawler name. And then indented I had um if if I had a conditional statement, if check validity brawler because brawler is basically each element of the list. So check validity brawler would evaluate to true if the element in my list actually qualifies for the other programmer to approve it. So check validity would uh, evaluate you true. So that conditional statement would evaluate you true and execute the indented code. So I did if check validity brawler. And if that's true, then I updated my k value, which I initially set to zero to k plus one. So k equals k plus one, um, which would only happen if the um, if the brawler actually qualifies for check validity procedure. And then outside the for loop, um, I put, so I had 77 elements. That's how I sort of checked whether all elements in your list are, in my list are considered valid by the other programmer. So I said, if k is greater than, I believe I had 77 elements. So if k is equal to 77, I believe I said it to that, um, then return true, else return false. So that's sort of how I did it. I did it, yeah, and that sh should have gotten me the points, but we'll see. So yeah, pretty easy. Obviously on the test, you'll write it all out, so it'll take more time, but. Now for set two, I haven't read these before, but let's quickly look, I heard this one was easier. Identify the expected group of users of your program, explain how your program addresses at least one concern or internet or interest of the users you identified. Okay, this one's easy. You're basically um, identifying who's the user of your program or who you made it for. In my case, Brawl Stars thing, um, it's for people who play Brawl Stars and need recommendations for brawlers um, in the game, because and it also like gives informative statements. So I guess people who play the game and are and are seeking recommendations on who to play based on their mm, preference type and rarity and overall gameplay, I guess. Um, and yeah, so that's the expected user addresses at least one concern. As I said, basic recommendation and my program does that. So you talk about on the same page with respect to your code. Okay, 2A, consider the first conditional statement included in the procedure section of your personalized projects reference Describe your conditional statement, including its Boolean expression. Describe what the procedure does in general when the Boolean expression of this conditional statement evaluates to false. Okay. So my conditional statement checks if the brawler through brawler name. No, it checks whether the argument the user inputs, which is the brawler they, want, they wish to learn more about, exists in the list. That's the first conditional statement. The Boolean expression is if B, where B is the argument or the parameter of the procedure, is equal to brawler, which is the element in the for loop. So for brawler and brawler name, so if B equals brawler. Um, that's my conditional statement. If it evaluates to false, there is no return statement that is informative, but otherwise it it's out if it evaluates to false, which is it's gonna do like several times actually as it goes through every brawler until it finds it in the list. Um, what the procedure does in general, it updates i to keep tracking through both lists as it goes through the for loop. And once it does evaluate to false 77 times, it just exits the for loop and returns a different statement saying the brawler is not found. Again, that's basically it. You just have to understand what the question says and relate it to your code. So, 2B is um, consider procedure identifying parts one and two of the procedure section of your PPR. Describe the outcome that your procedure call is intended to produce. Write a new procedure call 
with at least one different argument value that will produce the same outcome if possible and explain why this procedure call produces the same outcome. The outcome to your procedure call is intended to produce write a new procedure call with the at least with the, mm, if possible and explain why this procedure call produces the same outcome if it is not possible to write a new procedure call that produces the same outcome explain why this is not possible mm -hmm. okay so for me again if the brawler is not found in the list it's not gonna like write an informative s statement saying this brawler is this rarity and this type instead however the common um output for a specific input is when there's a misspelling and the brawler is not found in that case the will produce the same outcome i guess it's like the same outcome because it basically prints the same statement except it changes the variable name based on what you input because it just says like the brawler you spelled which is this does not exist so i this one's interesting um new procedure call that produces the same outcome so i would approach it that way i don't know if that's right though i'll leave your thoughts in the comments this one's weird actually i don't think i would want this one on my ap exam let's move on to 2c i heard that one's easy consider the procedure identified in part one of the procedure section of ppr identify the parameters used explain how your identified parameters use abstraction to manage complexity in your program okay that's easy consider your procedure look at your parameter mine would be just b which is the input um that the user does to select the brawler um that's the parameter explain how your identified parameter use abstraction to manage complexity in your program so b is a little so it uses abstraction because one letter is used to represent a brawler name which is easy to track keep track of one variable throughout the procedure to check for errors or whatnot to manage complexity in your program so this one variable is then used as a per as an argument in the procedure to output a recommendation based on user's input i guess yeah okay so 2d is like the set two frqs are actually harder based on my i actually like my set for people who got 2d i mean not 2d set d this is actually kind of hard i don't know what it's talking about i mean like i'm not too confident in answering these questions as i am answering these questions okay despite this like some people may be tricked by this question alone because it's so difficult and you have to utilize a different procedure but then again we practice this in class so like yeah i'd rather take set one than two and i did so i guess i won in the end now we just have to wait until july so that's all of the frqs for csp 2024 updated frqs new style with an frq section so thank you guys for watching and let me know if you guys have any questions peace